All right, so here's the last part of the practice test. And this one is to assign oxidation numbers to each element, classify as precipitation as the base of redox, and if the reaction is redox, identify which species oxidized and which is reduced. So I'm going to go kind of quickly through these, but before I do that, I'll just summarize the, the um, steps to assigning oxidation numbers again. If it's something in its elemental form, remember it's a zero oxidation number. If it's oxygen, it's usually minus 2. There are some exceptions, like in peroxide, H2O2, then it's minus 1, but that's kind of rare. Remember, elements in its elemental state could be diatomic, so O2, for example, would be a zero oxidation number. Hydrogen is positive 1 as long as it's with nonmetals. Fluorine is always negative 1, always negative 1. And then make sure that you use the sum rule correctly, so when you're adding things up in the in, in a formula, they always have to sum to whatever charge it is in the upper right-hand corner. And lastly, there's a couple other assumptions to make. And these are ones from your periodic table. So from your periodic table, you can assume that it's from group 1, it's going to be positive 1. If it's from group 2, it's going to be positive 2. And then you can make some good guesses over here with aluminum being positive 3, zinc plus 2, cadmium plus 2, and silver positive 1. Usually this group is negative 1, but remember, fluorine is the only for sure. And then these guys are zero right here. Oxygen's minus two, as we said before. So those are the general rules. And then with the general rules, now we're going to go and we're going to assign the oxidation numbers to every species in here and then decide whether it's a redox reaction or not. So gold is zero because it's alone by itself. Oxygen would be negative two because it's almost always negative two. And then something at plus negative two times three, because there's three of them right here, equals negative one, because there's a negative one in the upper right hand corner. So that means nitrogen right here would have to be plus five. Hydrogen here is plus one, chlorine's minus one. Now we move to the other side. Over here, oxygen's negative two. That means to add up to zero, nitrogen must be positive two. Oxygen is negative two, hydrogen is positive one. Here you have to make a good educated guess that chlorine is uh, in this group right here that's usually negative one, so that's a pretty good guess. And if it's negative one times four and it's got to add up to negative one, that means gold's got to be positive three. So now we can see that the oxidation numbers change from one side to the other. Gold goes from zero to positive three, and then um, chlorine goes from uh, I'm sorry, not chlorine. Nitrogen goes from positive 5 to positive 2. So nitrogen goes down in charge from 5 to 2. And then oxygen goes from 0 up to, I'm sorry, oxygen, not, I'm sorry, gold goes from 0, AU, to positive 3. All right, so that's the first one. As we go along in this recording, I'll try to... Um, uh, identify the redox reactions here by assigning the oxidation numbers as quickly as possible. So lead plus 2, sulfur minus 2, hydrogen positive 1, oxygen, careful, this one is negative 1 because you can notice it's H2O2. It's one of the few exceptions where oxygen is negative 1. You can see it's the peroxide ion. The peroxide ion right here is O2 minus 2. And that means that each individual atom inside of there has a negative one charge. And you just recognize it in hydrogen peroxide, maybe in something else peroxide, but it's very rare. Here you can use the rules of polyatomic ions to help you. Lead would be positive two because this species right here would be negative two. Water, of course, is positive one, and oxygen is negative two. Now we have to go through and break this SO4 up because there's not an SO4 on this side. And since we know that SO4 is 2 minus, we can use the sum rule to figure out what sulfur is. Oxygen is negative 2. There's four of them, and it's got to add up to negative 2. So that means something plus negative 8 equals negative 2. So that means sulfur has got to be positive 6. So now we know what the redox is. Uh, sulfur goes from negative 2 to positive 6, so it goes up in charge, so it's oxidized. And then the oxygen right here goes from negative 1 to negative 2, so it goes down in charge, so it's reduced. So oxygen goes from minus 1 to minus 2. The next one. Sodium is positive 1, hydrogen is positive 1, the carbonate ion is negative 2. So if we take the negative 2 carbonate ion and we break that up, this whole thing right here is negative 2. Oxygen is negative 2. There's three of them. It's got to add up to negative 2 right here. 
which means that carbon's got to be positive 4 inside of this species. Over here, H2SO4, oxygen's negative 2, there's 4 of them. Hydrogen right here is uh, positive 1. Um, this species right here, SO4 sulfate, is also present on this side. So I'm not going to break it up. I'm just going to keep it together because I know that the sulfur doesn't change from one side to the other right there. I could figure it out. Sulfur would be positive 6, but uh, it stays the same on both sides. Sodium is plus 1. Hydrogen is positive 1. Oxygen is negative 2. Carbon is positive 4. Oxygen is minus 2 right here, and there's two of them. So as we see, nothing changes. Carbon remains positive 4 on both sides. Oxygen is negative 2 on both sides. The sodium is positive 1 on both sides. And of course, the sulfates are negative 2 on both sides as well. This is a not a redox reaction. So that means it's got to be something else. Clue number two, is there a solid formed? If there's a solid formed, then we know it's a precipitation reaction. Well, it doesn't look like there's a solid form. There is a gas form, so maybe it's something else. So if it's not redox, it's not precip, it's probably acid base. Let's take a look. Uh, acid base, we'd have, oh, an acid, H2SO4. And then hydrogen carbonate, that can act as a base. And notice it's one of those gas forming ones right here where an acid reacts with HCO3. So this is an acid base type reaction. Last one, assigning oxidation numbers real quickly. Oxygen's negative 2. Manganese is positive 7. Hydrogen is positive 1. Oxygen's negative 1. That's that exception again. Positive 1 right here. Manganese is positive 2. Oxygen 0. Hydrogen's positive 1. Oxygen's negative 2. The manganese right here goes from 7 to positive 2. It goes down in charge. And the oxygen goes from negative 1 to negative 2. It goes up in charge. So oxygen is oxidized and manganese is the thing that's reduced. Somebody might say, how did I know it's negative 7 or positive 7? So MnO4 adds up to minus 1. Oxygen's minus 2. There's 4 of them. Something plus negative 8 has to equal negative 1. That means it must be positive 7 right there. All right, that takes care of the redox reaction problems. Now let's go here and we have two solution stoichiometry problems here to uh, finish up the whole practice test. So steps to stoichiometry, remember, are balanced chemical equation, when in doubt, convert to moles. If they give you more than one, divide by the coefficient to determine the limiter. Then you get the mole-to-mole -mole reaction. Uh, and then you convert to the asked for units. So in number one right here, they say 20 grams of sodium carbonate reacts with 1,000 mils of 0.2 molar HCl. We're given two amounts of species right here, so we are definitely going to have a limiter. We're going to have to figure out which one limits. Step number one, though, write the balanced chemical reaction. Done for us. Step number two, convert to moles. So we have 20 grams of sodium carbonate. We're going to convert that to moles. And if you add up sodium carbonate on the periodic table, it's 106 grams in one mole. And if you do that on your calculator, I believe you end up with 0.189 uh, moles of the sodium carbonate. The other one we're going to need the molarity triangle for because we're given a volume and a molarity. Volume here and a molarity right here. And so point. I'm sorry, one liter it is, right? Because it's 1,000 milliliters. So our volume is one liter times our molarity, which is 0.2 molar. And that is going to equal uh, 0.2 moles of the HCl. And here we have 0.189 moles of the Na2CO3. So to determine the limiter now, we need to divide by the coefficient. So Na2CO3 would be divided by 1. HCl would be divided by 2. You don't have to do the math. You just have to decide which one would be smaller if I did do the math. And obviously, 0.2 divided by 2 is going to end up being 0.1, which is smaller than the 0.189. So this one right here limits my reaction. All right, now we work the rest of the problem based on the limiter. And it says, uh, after math proof, please, we did, calculate the mass of carbon dioxide produced. So we take the moles of our limiter, 0.2 moles of the Hickel. Put a multiply sign, put a line, put Hickel in a position where it's going to cancel, put the desired unit up here on the top. And the thing that I want to know is how much carbon dioxide is produced right here. So CO2 is my new set of units. And remember, this is a mole to mole ratio. And I get that from the balanced chemical equation. So for every one carbon dioxide, I get two Hickels. Lastly, 
convert to the ask for unit, so it wants to know the mass in grams. So we're going to have to do one more step right here. And so put carbon dioxide moles right down here and grams of carbon dioxide right up here. Whoops, CO2. Add up carbon dioxide on the periodic table. There's 44 grams in one mole. Multiply those animals together, and I believe you end up with 4.4 grams of carbon dioxide as uh, your produced amount in letter B. In letter C, uh, it says calculate the mass of leftover excess reactant. So always start with your limiter. Always start with your limiter. And your limiter is 0.2 moles of 8 hickel right here. Then take and compare your hickel to your excess reagent. So put hickel in a position where it's going to cancel. Your excess reagent is the Na2CO3 because I want to know how much of that is going to be used up. For one of these, there's two of those animals. So that's my mole to mole ratio part right there. 0.2 um, divided by 2 ends up being 0.1 moles of the Na2CO3 that is used up. Now, I started with 0.189. I used up 0.1. In math class, I have to find the difference between these two, and difference means subtract. So subtract those two, and you end up with 0 0.089er moles left over. It does ask for the grams, so you do have to convert to the ask for units right here, so I have to take these moles of Na2CO3 that's left over, put Na2CO3 in a position where it's going to cancel, put grams of Na2CO3 as my new set of units in one mole, add that up on the periodic table, there's 106 grams in a mole, and you end up with 9.43 grams left over. One more problem left on the practice test. I'm going to do it on a separate piece of paper right over here on the side. This is problem number two right here, last problem on the practice test. I'll zoom out so you can see just a little bit better. It says, if eight moles of sodium carbonate react with 200 liters of 0.1 molar hickel, then which limits? Calculate the mass of carbon dioxide produced and calculate the mole of leftovers. So it's the same problem as we just did. It's just got different numbers. And if I were you, after watching this one, I'd go and pause the video and try this problem yourself and then come back and watch and see if you got the correct answer. So first of all, steps to stoichiometry. Step number one, write the balanced chemical equation. Done for us. Step number two, when in doubt, convert to moles. So we're given eight moles right here already of sodium carbonate. Lucky us, we don't have to do that step. And then 200 liters of 0.1 molar hickel. So we're going to need the molarity triangle to find the moles there. So moles would be equal to molarity times liters. And the molarity is uh, 0.1. And the liters are 200. 200 liters. That's a lot of liters. Okay. So we end up with 20.0 moles of this hickel right here. So to determine... Now, now that we've done step two and converted to moles, now we need to divide by the coefficient to determine the limiter. So the coefficient in front of Na2CO3 is 1. The coefficient in front of Hickel is 2. So 8 divided by 1 or 20 divided by 2. Which one ends up being smaller? You don't actually have to do the math. You just have to see which one ends up being smaller. And Na2CO3 ends up being the smaller. Therefore, this is my limiter. And I just answered question letter D right here, which limits. And this is my math proof to do that. All right, letter E, calculate the mass of carbon dioxide present. Start with your limiter, so 8 moles of Na2CO3. Put a multiply sign, put a line. Do the mole to mole ratio between Na2CO3 and the desired unit up here, and it wants to know carbon dioxide, so I put carbon dioxide right up there. Carbon dioxide has a 1 in front of it. Na2CO3 has a 1 in front of it, and look at that. I have 8 moles of CO2. But it asks for mass, so I have to do the last step and convert to the asked for units. So grams of CO2 go here, moles of CO2 go here on the bottom. For every one mole, there's 44 grams. I got that from the periodic table. 8 times 44 ends up being 352 grams of carbon dioxide that's produced. And lastly, letter F, calculate the leftover amount of the excess reagent. Start with the limiter. 
always start with the limiter. So moles of Na2CO3 right here. Put your limiter in a position where it's going to cancel, Na2CO3. Put your desired unit here on the top, and my desired unit is the excess reactant. The excess reactant is Hickel, because I want to know how much Hickel um, is um, going to be used up when all of the Na2CO3 is gone. For every one Na2CO3, there's two Hickels right here. 8 times 2 is 16. So there are 16 moles that are used up. Now, look back up here. I started with 20 moles of Hickel. That's how much I started with. I used up 16 moles. How much is left? Well, find the difference. In math class, difference means subtract. So 20 minus 16 means that there's 4 moles left over of the Hickel. Good luck on the chapter three, four test.